Yay Networks. Uh, to be honest, sit down, we need to have a talk. Cornelius gonna make a point that the others don't. The mother show sound the same, come and state the box. Expand your mind, dig into no controversial topics. He ain't scared to keep it real. Tune into this podcast, but don't be in your feelings. We gonna have a laugh, we gonna talk about some pain. Let's talk about the present situation of today. So what's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of To Be Honest. This is your boy Cornelius, and um, man, it's a lot going on in the world right now. Like a whole lot going on in the world right now. Um, it's interesting, you know. We uh, I think like two weeks ago, uh, I had a conversation brought on uh, one of my good one of my good homies, and we we talked about a lot of different things from uh, from votes to uh, 2000 from the midterm elections and everything else is happening. We also kind of touched on the, uh, the Russian, uh, the Russia situation, which now has, you know, kind of grown by leaps and bounds uh, in many senses where Russian troops, well, Putin has sent in Russian, tr- uh, Russian troops in which, you know, many, in most cases they refer to them as peacemakers, but sending these Russian troops because there were some deflections uh, in, in Ukraine. So, uh, Putin went in to recognize those those two territories in Ukraine that would ultimately fall under a Russian a Russian rule. Well, you know, President Biden has been coming back and forth to the microphone. He's been he's been giving us live coverage, saying that we believe uh, through our intelligence that you know Russia is in fact going to invade Ukraine. Uh, I believe it was it was uh, a couple of days ago that uh, President Biden made it clear, and the the news headlines came out that Russian forces have indeed invaded Ukraine. Now, I don't know if I said this here. I don't know. Maybe I said this uh, with my wife on, on life of the lenses, or maybe my, I was just talking to my wife in person. But one of the things that we have to look out for too, is that if, if Putin continues, it's not just Ukraine that he'll take. He'll also potentially go into Poland as well. Not only that, but you also have the threat of China which, you know, could soon enough, you know, overtake Taiwan. And we look back at America, and I think the one question that we have to ask is what is America's involvement when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, uh, when it comes to the business of the world? Should America continuously be involved in worldly affairs? Now, we have to look at this because America is a part of NATO. We are a part of the National Alliance, and uh, it's important for America to uh, protect uh, NATO countries, especially those who are not able to defend themselves. Now, the major argument that comes from this is why does America have to be the one to go in and save the day? Why can't, you know, why can't Germany, which is a whole lot closer? You know, what about France? What about Italy? What about the United Kingdom? What are they doing? Now, Germany, Germany did stop the, the, the pipeline from continuing or, or the permit for the pipeline or whatever it was. But nevertheless, why aren't they why aren't they doing more? So the question always comes into why does America have to be the country that constantly goes in to try to be the peacemaker, the rule keeper of the world? Can that can that responsibility be passed over to others? And this argument has never been more clear than right now especially since right now in America, we have, we have a litany of problems. I mean, uh, I, I've, I was speaking with uh, a couple people the other day. And one of the things that, that we talked about was uh, how can we, be, how can we be more concerned about the borders with between Russia and Ukraine? And we're not concerned about the, the border between, you know, Mexico and America. I don't know if you realize this. I live in California. Uh, fentanyl is, is, is ravaging uh, California, not only California, Arizona, Texas, other places, but fentanyl is, I mean, it's, it, it's getting into all different types of neighborhoods. And this is not something that's going to be going away, going away fairly quickly. I mean, this is something that is going to continuously just be trafficked, not only through the Mexican border, but also through other areas. We also have to think about, you know, people who are getting into the Mexican borders. A lot of times, you know, news media try to spin it to make it seem like it is only Mexicans who are trying to get over into America, which is not the case at all. The reason why there is such a desire 
to see about the Mexican border is because we have people who may come from other countries who want to do America harm. They know that they can't, they're on the no fly zone list, so they can't fly into America. So instead they can fly into Mexico, they can fly into you know, South America and uh, Venezuela, other places, and they can just, you know, just take a, just, just walk over, just walk right on in through the Southern border. So that's, that's been, that's been an issue. So we have, we have the, we have the Mexico, we have the Mexico uh, U S border. Not only that, but we also have the issues that's going on in Canada. I don't know if you've, if you've seen the, the truckers blockade, um, which uh, uh, president, which uh, Pri- prime minister Trudeau uh, has, uh, I mean, basically ran in just pretty much clean house. So we have, you have, you have a lot of things going on at the at top of America, which America is not getting involved in when it comes to Canada. We're not really getting involved with uh, what's going on with, uh, with Mexico, with people coming across the border. And here's the thing. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of people who, who've talked about, who we've heard talk about the Mexican border. I actually had an opportunity. I went to Texas to go hunting, but I was in, I was in Uvalde. I think it was Uvalde or Uvalde, Texas. And there I was able to talk to some locals there who were, who we're talking about every single week they're out farming or they're out on their tractor. They're out on, they're out in their truck and they'll notice there, there'll be a dead body just laying outside, like next to a, next to a stream. And this is where people who were trying to, uh, trying to get over, trying to cross the border, they're crossing the border, but then when they get there, they're, they're exhausted. They may have been swimming. They may have been walking for a long time. They haven't eaten. They don't have anything, you know, clean to drink. And now they're dead. And these bodies are just, you know, found riddled all around or people, you know, showing up to people's houses at two or three o'clock in the morning and just knocking on doors, hoping that someone answers so they can barge inside. Now, in no way should my take on this or should their words in this be taken as though the immigrants that are coming, that they are some kind of criminals. That's not the case at all. But we do have to we do have to take a firm look at American policy first and making sure that if we are going to open up our doors and which I'm, I'm, I'm of the favor that we should open up our doors. If we are going to open up our doors, we have to make sure that the citizens are, are okay first. I mean, we have a lot of things going on. And, hey, and here's the other question. What the heck happened to COVID? Can we talk about that for a few minutes? What the heck happened to COVID? When we, <laughs> it just seems like as soon as the midterm elections got, got underway, then it was like COVID just kind of disappeared. I think Chicago, Chicago just announced it by, uh, by the end of the month that they're going to, uh, they're going to lift all uh, mask mandate and all, uh, and all vaccine mandates. Uh, California, California lifted all the indoor mask mandates um, except for schools. So isn't that something? I mean, I, it just doesn't make sense. So I can, I can walk in a whole foods and not wear a mask but you're trying to tell me that our children can't go to school and, 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 you know, and not, and, and not take off their mask, which is so crazy. I mean, a lot of, a lot of California schools, because of our, because of our weather type, they're outdoors. I mean, my kids spend a ton of time outdoors, which is the reason why we, we love the schools out here. They, they spend a ton of time outdoors. They're outdoors and they're eating. They're outdoors playing. They're outdoors learning. A lot of times they're outdoors they, when they do the Pledge of Allegiance and when they do the Pledge of the Bible, they do the Pledge of the Christian flag, they're outside. So it's like this idea they need to have, they need to have masks going inside of a classroom where typically the windows are open and the doors are open during the day. It's like, why in the world is that a thing? Why in the world are we still doing this? And why in the world are we still having this, especially for our children who in most cases are the least, are, 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 are in most cases can be the least infected. But nevertheless, you know, it seems like the mask mandate is going away in California, except in LA County, of course, you know, people in LA County still have to wear a mask. Um, but you see it, you see it dropping. You see it, you see New York City, you see Chicago, you see that you see these large liberal cities who are saying, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not going to do it, but you have to, you have to ask the question, why, what happened? And you can say, well, there was a decrease in that. There was a decrease in, in, in COVID cases. Well, that's been the case for a while. So now we have, we have midterm elections coming up and you can't, you cannot help but to argue the fact that a lot of this stuff is politicized. You know, is, is, is it that, you know, we, we want to be, we want to be big. We want to be big Tom Luke. Uh, on on the on the on the world stage with Russia, so that you know we can somehow increase the stature, or increase the poll numbers for our sitting United States president. A lot of these things are politicized. 
They're all politicized and it's all politics. And this is the thing that people have to realize. I mean, really asking the question, okay, with Ukraine, what in the, I mean, what, what, I don't, I don't want to sound insensitive here, but why are we so focused on Ukraine right now? Why are we so focused on Poland right now? I mean, why are we even so focused on Taiwan right now? when we should really be focused on American issues. We should be focused on things that are going on right now, right now in America. And that's that, you know, that's not even the case. We have to, we have to make sure that we, that we, that we take care of things in America first. We got to make sure that we, we take care of things in America first. And if we're not, then America's going to be, America's going to be left behind. It's not going to, it's not going to, um, it, it, it's not going to do us, it's not going to do us any good to just continue on, you know, trying to be the savior of the world. And then, you know, America just kind of goes to kaputs. That's, that's literally where we're headed right now. So we have to begin to do something. We have to begin to do something fast. Um, we have a lot of things going on right now in America. And, you know, I have people, I sit down and have these conversations with people about some of the things, uh, you know, that are going on in America. And, and you have some people who, are legitimately afraid. You know, what does, what does world war three look like? And in my opinion, I definitely don't want to go to war with Russia. I don't want to go to war with Putin. I mean, I don't want to go to war with China. Heck, I don't, I don't think we should, we should go to war with anybody right now. We, we need, we need to sit, I sit as old folks used to say back where I was from, we need to sit our tails down. There's too much going on, but you have midterm elections that are coming up right now. And with the midterm elections, the reason why I think that a lot of a lot of things are changing right now is because it is politics. To be honest, we have we have the Democratic Party is currently right now losing support, which is why a lot of a lot of mainstream Democrats are coming out and they're saying, listen, 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 I know I know we said that we wanted to defund the police, but now we're not. That is not a position of Democratic Party. But that was not the position of the Democratic Party. Many Democrats. You know, ran on that position. They ran on the position that they that they wanted to defund the police. There are still some Democrats who are still pushing that. They wanted to defund the police. And now, you know, they're sitting back and saying, no, 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 we don't want to defund the police anymore. We don't want to defund the police. No, 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 we're not trying to defund the police. We never said we're trying to defund the police. We could bring up all the news articles. We never said we're trying to defund the police. And so now that's coming back and now they're trying to backtrack. No, 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 we're not going to defund the police. We're not going to defund the police. So now that's that's one whole thing. But then you also have the you also have the mass mandates with a lot a lot of liberal cities, a lot of liberal states put massive, massive crackdowns as it relates to uh, as it relates to uh, to covid vaccine or, or to covid vaccines. And also, you know, covid, we'd say covid safety measures. The problem with that is it destroyed a great deal of their economy. It ruined a lot of their jobs. A lot of businesses went out of business. A lot of businesses have not been able to recover. A lot of people now they have this mass type of hysteria and mass type of dysphoria where now, you know, they, they've worn masks for so long they don't want to take them off. There was a report of a school uh, that were the students were actually were actually chanting. They actually marched and said they bring the mask back, bring the mask back. They want to wear their mask. But here's the thing that I come into as I kind of come to a close here. Whatever happened Whatever happened to the idea of allowing people to make their own decisions? Like, why is it that we have to, what is the, what is the thinking behind the idea to mandate? Now, I have people that will come to me and I'll say, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I, and I have people in my family who are, who, are, who are doctors. Like, we have a niece who's a doctor. And I have, I have friends who are doctors. And I've, I've had these conversations with them. And the, one, the biggest one that I've, I've had with them is this. How is it that I'm now responsible for somebody else's health because I don't wear a mask? So I'm responsible for their health because I don't wear a mask, but they're not doing anything to they're not doing anything to regulate their vitamin C, their vitamin D levels. They know nothing that's happening with their body levels. They eat like trash. They don't exercise. They don't work out. They don't get sunlight. They don't drink enough water. And now I'm the one who's responsible for them if they get sick. I didn't help them. I didn't. I didn't feel them. It's the. It's like that old that old episode of uh, of of the office, when uh, when Stanley, uh, when Dwight. I, I love the office, by the way. Uh, Dwight had uh, Dwight did like this fire this fire drill that really messed up. You know, it messed up the office. But anyway, Stanley had a heart attack, and Dwight had to give an apology. And Dwight's standing there, and he's one of the characters on the show. 
and he's standing there and, and he says, he said, okay, everybody, let's, let's all take a, let's all, you know, uh, take a, take a lesson from Stanley and jog on up here. He's like, you know, and it is another character on the show. I'm doing a horrible job explaining it, but nevertheless, Phyllis, she says, no, you almost killed Stanley. And Dwight said, yeah, I've, I, uh, I forced him full of, I forced him full of uh, butter and uh, sugar for, uh, for 50 years and forced him not to exercise. It's like that right there. I mean, that even though it was a joke on the show, it was really funny. It's like, you know, Phyllis wanted to blame Dwight for Stanley's problem. But Dwight's like, well, for the past 50 years, I didn't tell him to eat the way he did. For the past 50 years, I didn't tell him not to exercise. For the past 50 years, I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him not to drink water. For the past 50 years, I didn't tell him not to, you know, to, to get his life together. I didn't, I didn't do that. So how is it now that I'm supposed to be responsible for somebody else's, for somebody else's life? I think this is where we have to come back to. For some reason in America, we are, we are losing, well, not just America, I think all over the world looks like, we're losing our sense of civility. We're also losing our sense of personal responsibility because it seems like it is everybody else's fault that we are the way we are. Instead of taking personal responsibility for ourselves and recognizing that our culture produces extremely bad habits, <clears throat> we put work, we put work over rest, we put achievement over family, we put junk over real food, and now we're trying to now we're trying to dictate pure health standards. I mean, again, it's all politicized. Pharmaceutical businesses want to make money, and the pharmaceutical business does not make money if you are healthy. They make money when you are sick, and when you are sick, you are forced. Listen to me. You are forced when you are sick to go to the hospital. This is a problem, and to be honest, we have to do something about it. We all appreciate y'all joining me. Make sure y'all continue to join me every single Wednesday for a new episode. I can't wait. I love y'all. God bless you. Introduces, I'm out. <laughs>